So we're not going to do that right right now. We're going to keep heading north. To solitude. Yeah, there we go. Oh boy. So yeah, like I had said before, though, frost fall, uh, don't, don't get wet. Because that'll make you cold, too. Who are you people? Talk to B first. She's the mouth of this operation. If she says you're okay... Then we'll talk. Oh, spoon dealers. Alright. Let me just, uh... No, don't worry. Nothing's happening. Okay. Finn, when did we last speak? It seems like ages since I last saw you. But only yesterday since those summer days by Nibbing. You would draw those intricate maps in the sand, and we would scamper about hunting for treasure, until the shrill call of our nannies would drag us back to the city for dinner. This map you have drawn me is of little use, it seems, for I have no doubt ignored its counsel. I have found the river, yet the rest of the directions seem to speak of another place, with trees and wildlife singing through the breeze. Where I stand now is a land of hills and valleys, its broad shoulders armored with a cuirass of rock. It is a small miracle that I have not gone completely mad, although at times I wonder if such a state would be preferable. Then, as if to mock my requests, the gods let me witness an act of true madness, and I realize that I am still whole. I dare not say more. The reach is not a safe place for me to sojourn. Sojourn. Or sojourn. For me to sojourn. Uh, for me to sojourn? Fortunately, I finally met a passerby I felt comfortable approaching. He was a Breton man, likely a servant of some sort, running an errand for his master. I wanted to ask him for directions, but how does one do so without knowing her destination? I searched the depths of my memory for a name, a place, a feeling. I mumbled something about a college a phrase without meaning or context, yet somehow the Breton was able to decipher my cryptic plea. Wordlessly, he pointed to the river, then guided that finger northeast. That's where this college must be. It was in that moment that I thought of you, Finn. I thought of the imperial city of Nabeen and the strident voice of the river at my feet. I need only follow its call. Lathgoin, Lathgoin, Namer, Namer, Lathgoin. Lathquin. Lathquin is Lathquin. So wait, Beatrice? What? Wait, what? The Boreal Journal of Lathquin Evanhart. Yes, thank you. Thank you, I know how to play a game. How about a refreshment? Wait, so who are you people? Speak. That wasn't either of your journals. Tardings to you, friend. Right, well. Tardings, honoured guest. My name is Beatrice. The raffish companion you see beside me goes by the name of Urzub. The timing of your visit is rather impeccable. Urzub has just secured a fresh skeever which we hope to prepare at the top of the hour. Ew, skeever. We welcome you to join us in the consumption of this delectable feast. Skeever delectable. I've never, never heard that description. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll pass. Our guest seems disappointed in the menu. My deepest apologies. I had not anticipated such an outcome. Skeever steak is known to be the Valkenjath of cooked meats, and their tales are a highly regarded delicacy in certain culinary circles. Uh -huh. Perhaps our guest would prefer a beverage instead. Parched of throat or parched of mind, our drink will offer the remedy. Yeah, I'm not doing skooma. Let me tell you that much. I'm a Khajiit, but I have standards, alright? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'd like to ask some questions. Oh, forgive first. me, manners. I am but an erstwhile savage who only recently gained the powers of articulation. Uh, what exactly are you doing here? We are troubadours, celebrators of life. We drink and feast from twilight to cockscrow, in tribute to tradition and song. And scuba. Many peddlers, hunters, and even forsworn will pay a good coin for a warm fire, good drink, and a verse from the poetic Edda. And skooma. Uh, yeah. No. Be sure to check the barrel by the camp. There's enough for everyone. Alright, so you guys are just... Is there just selling skooma here? Skooma and Lodge. Skooma and Lodge, there you go. Alright. Sure, guys, whatever. I guess, yeah, we're heading out. That's so weird. Alright, sure. Oh. I think that was also probably, I'm using interesting NPCs, which adds a bunch of NPCs with a lot of background and dialogue options and story. And, uh... Yeah, it's not going there right now. Uh... And I think that was probably one of them. So... Shoot that person dead? It's kind of a. It's kind of brutal. Wait, no, that's. What? Oh. Yeah, he chipped that bear trap. Wow. You know, you guys are pretty. You guys are pretty thorough about murdering every Nord you find. I mean, I've, I've seen several Nords that you guys have murdered. I'm a little... Alright. You know, every other Forsworn is hostile. Just that one counter. Where they had already murdered someone. They're like, no, we're we're good. We, we, we've already got someone. We already, we already murdered someone, so... You know, we're good. That's our, uh... That's our murder quota for the day, you know. You can, uh, you can go free. Move along. M move along. That was, that was so, I mean, I'm still a little, I'm still a little confused about that, but whatever. And it wasn't an interesting NPC's encounter because they didn't say anything. They didn't want to talk at all. They were just like, yeah, yeah, what, what, what do, what do you want? Just interrupting our, our murder over here. So, I, I don't know. Oh. Ah! Really? Uh, physics. Alright, someone actually locking their doors, alright. I mean, that's pretty normal, but in Skyrim that's pretty odd. Alright, so it's definitely... Really? Come on. Ugh. Yeah, I just got a little wet. That's what that bar is. You don't really want to get wet, because it just makes you more cold. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> Very cold. Yeah, it's pretty cold. Uh, up near salt, too. Oh. Jeez, 
because that was a massive stutter. All right. Roar. No, it's not Rogue Strand. Uh, Dragon Bridge. Yeah, it's Dragon Bridge. So we're just going to go into the inn and warm up a little bit. Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. Yes. See who these people Keep are. walking, stranger. All right. That's All right then. Real what friendly. do you need? Hey. Tell me, traveler. Do you have any regrets? Of course you do. We all do. They say regrets are the foundation of wisdom. For if we do not regret our mistakes, we are damned to repeat them. Our successes, meanwhile, need not to be remembered, for they only serve to bolster our temerity. That is why a general is haunted not by his victories in the battlefield, but those that slip from his grasp. Okay, so this is another this is another person added by interesting NPCs. Uh, I know I regret talking to you. <laughs> the regrets haunt me every day and I vow not to repeat them. I have no regrets that I'm strong and handsome. I bet you wished you were me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. That is the way we are meant to live. Always tumbling forward, looking back only to see how far we've come. For some things, such a task is simple. A hastily written report. A tactless reply. A spilled drink. A spilled drink, really? For others, the tendrils run deeper. Rooting your body in the earth. There is no way forward. You mean dying? Not until you free yourself of the memory. Not until you make things right. Uh, what exactly is your problem? The thief. The one that got away. An Imperial woman, based on the reports. The lone operative. She's burglarized homes of a number of notable lords, thanes, and nobles. At times, she's even ransomed their children. She's outfoxed the city guards. Evaded the Oculatus. And even managed to rankle prominent members of the Thieves Guild. Uh, so why haven't you put more effort into finding her? I mean, I don't know. That seems like not really that high of a priority since there's a civil war going on. I don't know. I guess. Yeah, that seems. Okay, whatever. Unfortunately, the resources of the Empire, exhausted in tracking her down, foresee the Council to suspend all pursuit. Given the state of the Imperial coffers, it was cheaper to let her run free and compensate the grief for their losses. <laughs> Only I remain dedicated to the cause okay. of justice. And what I lack in men and resources, I make up for in will. Sure. I've chased her across Tamriel for the last 15 years. And I believe I'm closer than ever to catching her. I mean, yeah, you've got a real will to catch her, you know. A real will you've got there, you know to be going out there and catching her, you know, to make up for the lack of resources and manpower you have, you know, you're really, you're really out there, you know, looking for her, you know, digging up leads and, you know, tracking her down, you know, really, really, you're drinking, that's what you're doing, instead of looking for her, okay, or, or any, you know, I don't, I don't even believe you. I don't know, she sounds interesting. I'm not sure what I find more incredulous. That you were a thief, or that you'd advertise this fact in the office of the Penitus Saculatus. This is not the office, this, this is the Either tavern. Way, you're not my problem any longer. I'm retired. It's the only way I can pursue this case without being reprimanded by my superiors. Oh, oh yeah, you're gonna reprimand me for, you know, not being above board, and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing this off the books, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually uh, an officer anymore. I'm just, uh, I'm just hunting people down, you know, for my own personal things. You know, things. My own personal vendettas, whatever. Yeah, also, this is not the. Whatever. No, or, or Aurelius offices or whatever. This is an inn, alright? This is, this is an inn. This is, this is not like a police office place. Even though it's not a police, whatever. If you're retired, then you should be. You shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Okay, so obviously this NPC is supposed to be in 
the headquarters or whatever of the Oculus or Occipolis or whatever. But he's not. He's in an inn. So, you have a description in, of the thief. What makes you think she's in Skyrim? Any advice for travel? Really, any advice? There have been several witnesses' accounts of a raven-haired thief posing as a bard. As you know, most who reside here are light of hair and tall in stature, which already narrows down the list of possible culprits. Really, does it? And while there are bards in Skyrim from here to Riften, there is only one capable of playing that song. What's that? Skadanadal Harbor was its name, if I call it correctly. A beautiful but solemn tune about the sunset over the Gold Coast and the tragic death of a loved one. Alright. Any advice for a traveler? They say when dealing with others, you have to know when to use the carrot, when to use the stick. Yet by when, they really mean on whom. All right. I think the word when is rather appropriate. There's more than just differences from person to person. People themselves can have very different personalities depending on the time of day. You never want to berate your spouse, for instance. First thing in the morning. Older seems to neglect this advice. <laughs> Alright. Do a description? I do. It's been burned into the bone of my skull from sketches and wanted posters and images from another time. Yes, yeah, is a lot. A raven haired woman, 32 years of age, with an aquiline nose and eyes the color of steel. She is as fearsome as an orc, but can be as cunning as a diplomat, and if need be, can charm me with the grace of a sylph. You know, this was a really old case, wasn't it? You, you, you've been looking for her for quite a long time, haven't you? You seem almost fond of her. So, a blind girl with a big nose. Got it. <laughs> what are you implying? One cannot evade the penitus oculatus and not earn a measure of respect. And one cannot defy them without earning their wrath. I am a soldier, sworn in the service of the penitus oculatus. Sworn to uphold the law. If someone breaks the law, it matters not whether they are the Raven of Anvil or the Emperor's own kin. They are all criminal scum. <laughs> yes, you're very, you're very imperial, aren't you? Stop right there, criminal scum! You violated the law. Yeah. Okay. You should have chosen a name less glorifying, like the <laughs> the Raven of Anvil. So you've given her a name. Anvil, so the thief is from Cerdo? Obviously. There's, okay, whatever. That seems pretty obvious. Yes. I thought it was best to give her a name that was more memorable and identifiable. All reports are at times conflicting, but the most reliable agree on one point. The girl has hair as black as a raven, so dark that it seems to devour the light around it. And like the ominous bird, she is not to be trusted. And the very sight of her is a wicked portent for those who have worked hard for their wealth. None more so than the Countess of Anvil, who in her weakness opened the doors of the Great Hall to this Eater of Carrion. Uh, yeah, there you are. About the lute playing over here. Flute playing. I'll be right back. Farewell. You there, need my request. It'll only take a moment of your time. For what I ask, I ask plain. All right. If you're a bard, for your own sake, do not sing. For your voice cannot compare to mine. Look, I'm just here to try to, you know, st stop. Stop, stop, stop the flute playing, alright? Trying to have a, con a conversation over there, and you're just, you know, over here... Floating away, you're, you're just—you're not even—you're not even making noise now. Now you're just still doing. Okay, whatever. You do sound and speak like a highborn. You sound like a noble, but you stink like a gutter rat. I'd rather stick a hot poker in my ear than hear you speak another word. There's nothing special about your voice. <laughs> oh my God! What? All right. You say that. Because you have yet to hear me sing. Once you do, 
My voice will echo in your mind to the distraction of all other thoughts. Can you uh, can you stop moving? Your profession suits you. Better you sing about wars than fight them. <laughs> I take it you're a bard. That's right. Although I wasn't always a handsome bard. I used to be a handsome adventurer. And before that I was just handsome. Unfortunately my adventuring days came to an end after I... Nearly lost my life in a scuffle with a group of bandits known as the Silver Hand. Mm -hmm. After that, I figured it wasn't worth it. Sure, I was a damn good fighter. The best. But I was damn near good at everything else, too. Yeah, I owed it to this world to keep me alive. I can't even begin to imagine what sort of Diedrich Nightmare Skyrim would be if I didn't exist. Alright. Uh... Can I make a request? Some think it was no. a voice born to tell stories. Or one man to lead men into battle. Others contend my very throat was forged by dragon fire. I've heard some describe it like a bottle of hard whiskey and boiled potatoes. Like smoke misting off hot coals. Most tell me it's a voice that carries with it a sense of authority. A voice fit for a king. I do nothing to dissuade such accusations. Now imagine I, I, this regal, manly voice of mine singing all the bard's favorites. My patrons from here to Riften will come to this inn to hear it. Yet despite me doubling her business, Vida insists on charging me for a room. Such greed is unbecoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, can I just ask you to stop playing? Of course you would. Tell me, with what song shall I escort you to the heavens? Uh, how about you just don't sing at all? Uh, mm, no. All right, something on your mind? Yeah, stop. All right then. Make it quick. Got okay. You know what? You tell me. Do you think I'm attractive? Are all the NPCs in here from interesting NPCs? Like, really? Come on. What the hell? Uh, I hate questions like this. I'll say yes and you'll think I'm just being nice. I'm sure you have a wonderful personality. <laughs> I don't know. I like males. Uh, why, yes, you are. Yeah, I hate these questions. And an answer like that is as good as saying no. Except that can't possibly be right, because I'm a ravishing beauty, and we both know it. Oh my God. Only if you did know it, you would have answered yes right away. Which must mean you're shy and don't want to admit you're in love with me. That's the same reason why Nalos pays so much attention to the High Elf. What? Who? What? What? Alduin is my arch enemy, my nemesis in love. Nelos is always talking to her, confiding in her, when he should be doing those things with me. It makes no sense why he prefers her company. Unlike that Somerset I saw, I'm a fellow Dunmer. Not to mention I'm cuter, funnier, and by far the more talented mage. And the worst part is they just met. How can he value the counsel of that drunk over his companion of five years? Who, who are you people? I've really, I, I've just talked to you for like a second and you're like, you know what, let me, let me pour all my personal stuff, you know, in here right away. You know, just, 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 ah. okay. People can fall in love rather quickly. Take us for example. <laughs> in Skyrim, life is short and courtship shorter. He obviously sees you as just a friend. I mean, yeah, it's pretty short. You don't think they've already... No, that's impossible. I followed Nelos here and saw no sign of that low elf. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good sign. I've heard Elduin is in Whiterun, and my dear Nelos is somewhere to the north of here. Uh, yeah, you're following him? Arguably the greatest mage in all of Tamriel. But when it comes to who is most dashing, I will tolerate no argument. He is a Dunmer of average height, but immeasurable stature. 
his eyes burning with the fire of the Red Mountain itself. For all those who serve the Guild, he is our leader, our mentor, our muse. We he is the hand and we are the fingers, waiting for the long night when we clutch all of Nern in our palm. Uh... I object to that. I am far more handsome than anyone. The Archmage is the greatest mage in Skyrim. Tell me more about your guilt. Wait, yeah, what, what guilt? We are a small group of mages, whose ideals do not always align with the hundred or so guilds that now roam Tamriel in place of the one. The Synod is too political. The College of Whispers is too short-sighted. The Sijiks are too close-minded. And let's face it, Winterhold is a wreck. The Radiant Dark is open to all who possess skill with magic, whether the light you cast shines brightly or darkly. Those who have power seek it, not for politics or justice, knowledge or peace, but for power itself. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's going to end well for you guys. Power should be used. Uh, power should be used to defend the powerless. Say no more. Where do I sign up? Guilds are all well and good, but I prefer to work alone. Yeah, let's, let's sign up. Oh, you can't just ask to be in the guild. Nelos has to select you, and he has a very discerning eye. Does Elduin he? Elduin may have the face of a slaughterfish, but her hands know fire better than her mouth knows wine. Gerard may ramble on like a fool, but his talent for alteration can bend city walls as easily as it bends spoons. And this does not even include the five acolytes of Nelos's personal guard, one for each school of magic. When they recover the knowledge that was lost, we will be that much closer to the day of the long night. What are you talking about? Okay, you know what? I feel like you're probably more of a cult than a guild, so... Uh, what brings you to Dragonbridge? When the guilds I belonged to last met, Nelos instructed us to refrain from contact for the time being. I suspected this might be some clever attempt for him and Alduin to escape on some tryst which neither I nor the laws of decency could abide by. <laughs> Lots of decency. So I followed Nelos to Harthinger, but only got as far as Dragonbridge before I lost track of him. You mean right here? I wait here now in hopes that he might return, and in fear that she will be with him when he does. Uh-huh. So, about this long night thing. The one written on the face of all who fear us, for Nelos himself wrote it. I've often thought of how it will come. Dreamt of it. Imagine a cool winter night, when the only sound you hear is the wind threading through the trees. The sort of nights made for long shadows and dark phantoms, for quick daggers and hot blood. A night born for unholy rituals, hushed whispers, and shivers down the spine of children and men. A night when the end of all things is possible. A wonderful night to have a curse. Uh, yeah, it sounds ominous. Uh, and yeah, obviously a little malicious. When nights are long and winters are cold, mortals die. This I like. <laughs> you speak in metaphors and folk tales. What's this long night really about? As I said, we at the Radiant Dark seek only power and the means to exercise it. What good is ice without something to cool? How can what? the extent of one's power be tested without a land to dominate? Uh, that's... When the spells that were lost are found, when the relics of forgotten magic are restored, not even the sun itself will bring light to our shadow. Are you or vampires? not. It may be that we fly too close to the gods and burn in their fire. Yet I, for one, plan on keeping my Nalos nice and cool. Sorry. You were mage? I am. And I'll have you know it wasn't all talent. I worked very hard to become the mage I am. A mage not everyone thought I could be. I still remember when I was but a novice at the college. Whenever I cast a destruction spell, everyone would comment on what a good enchanter I was. I didn't realize it at the time, but I think they were insulting me. Although, to be fair, I am a good enchanter. The best. <laughs> of course. You've, uh, you've made it abundantly clear you are wonderful at everything. Yes. But I found where I truly excel is with spells of frost and cold. I was in the Arcanaeum studying a tome on that very subject when I first met Nelos. Mm -hmm. He looked so menacing with that lick of hair and blades of war paint slashed across his face. Yet his voice was gentle. He asked me if I understood the tome I read. 
I could only nod what remained of my head as my body melted into the floor. His questions turned out to be a sort of audition, one that I naturally passed with flying colours, despite Nalos having sailed under false ones. Uh, what did Nalos want from me? Destruction magic is a poor substitute for the thrill of destroying my hand. You left a fine institution to follow this rogue mage, but you won't be missed. Yeah, what did he want? Nalos recognized my talent for destruction and chose to cultivate it, whereas Mirabelle wanted me to train under the Master Enchanter. Of course, he wouldn't accept me into his guild without first passing three additional tests. Did she say you were better at The first anyway? was to still his heart, the second was to make him smile, and the third was to take his breath away. Okay, so maybe those tests were self-imposed, but I still plan on passing them. Okay. Yeah, what about the town? It was a book recommended to me by the librarian's apprentice on the nature of destruction magic. While some schools attempt to mimic reality and others try to alter it, it was unclear whether destruction was doing one or the other. When you harness the elements, do you draw them from nature? Or manifest them. When heat is drawn to make fire, does the air lose warmth? Much of this was explained to me by Nelos. Not that I needed him to. I understood it just fine. I just wanted to hear his voice. Of course, he probably would never, would have never spoken again otherwise. I don't know what that means, but. In any case, he told me how the answer lies in the beasts of the wild and the world around us. When plants fail to grow in mage light, its proof alteration is not natural. When the invisible can be touched, it proves that illusion is not real. Then look at the way catfish come to the surface when the earth is about to quake, or how rodents scurry indoors days before winter. Nature knows what's real, and it will react to a coming storm in the same fashion whether it made by mortals or gods. Okay. Oh, why frost magic, though? There's no way to be certain why the divines blessed me with such a specific gift, but I do know how. You see, fire scorches and lightning shocks, but ice is a paradox, for it can both destroy and preserve. In fact, my grandmother once believed frost magic was the key to eternal youth. Yeah, go on. This couldn't have possibly ended well. Well, the old bat thought if she slowed the heart and the body, she could slow the aging process itself. Nope. Every day she cast frost spells on herself, trying to delay the appointment the wrinkles had with her neck. Yet it only left her skin cracked and dry and whiter than a Nord's. She was a living ghost. Soon her health began to fail and she no longer could muster up the magicka for her daily treatment. That's when she bought me a tome on frostbite. She was completely mad, of course. Should a child always listen to her elders? Was it wrong for me to end her miserable existence? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could just use restoration spells, but you probably would have just continued to treat vents. You could use some ice yourself on those bags under your eyes. In this case, no. Yeah, no, in this case, no. Really? I thought I was doing her a favor. Although granted, I may be a bit biased. I did N quite really? enjoy the way the frost nibbled on her skin. So much so, I might have overdid the treatment. She was, however, well preserved in the end. I'm sure she was. All right. Mm. Away with you. Okay, we'll see. Oh, wait, where did, where did mopey guy go? Did he leave? Did he finally go back to his actual headquarters? Where he thought he was the whole time? Yeah. Yeah, he totally did. Alright, well we're warm, so let's uh let's get moving.